I'm here with Eddie Muller. He is the founder of the Film Noir Foundation, and he's also known as the Czar of Noir. <laughs> yes, that would be me. <laughs> How'd you get that name? Um, <laughs> a woman in San Francisco, I was doing an event there one night at the Mechanics Library, I think, and she was giving me a big effusive introduction and it just popped out of her mouth. She just said, he's the czar of noir. <laughs> and so I, I use it now. My dad was a sports writer and he wrote about boxing primarily. And you know, boxers all have nicknames. And yeah. So yes. it's like, I knew the value of a good nickname immediately. So as soon as I heard it, I said, I'm using that. It works well. It's it good. Does. It does. Sets you apart. Thank you. <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit about film noir, what it is and what's the history behind it? Uh, well, film noir, I call it uh, Hollywood's only organic artistic movement. Uh, it really came to fruition in the 1940s, a bit before the end of World War II, and then reached its height in the years, five or six years after the end of the war. Um, and I call it an organic artistic movement because there's no reason that these films were made. Mm -hmm. There was no economic reason for the films to be made. Uh, it was an artistic movement because the writers were tired of writing stories where everybody lived happily ever after and everything was set right at the end. Uh, the directors felt a little hamstrung because they couldn't make serious adult stories about what the world is really like. Mm -hmm. um, the actors themselves wanted to break out. And can you tell me a little bit about yourself? How did you become interested in film noir? Um, I was always sort of drawn to these movies. It's, it's hard to put your finger on like why. I mean, why do you like to look at certain paintings as opposed to other paintings. Obviously, there's something in my character that this connects with. But my, I, I think it's because of my father, who was a newspaper man in this era, mm -hmm. at the time of the original films. And when I watch the films, it feels to me like this is when my dad was in his prime. This is the world that he lived in, which was always very romantic to me and very seductive in a way. And and it was like watching his home movies or something. You know? My father wrote about boxing. And yes. boxing is the most noir sport, right? And so I knew a lot of these characters. You know, my dad knew newspaper guys and gangsters and politicians mm -hmm. and all this stuff. Yes. And so I saw them all when I was very young. And so the movies felt I felt at home with these mm -hmm. movies influenced by it all. Mm -hmm. And your work is almost like a detective, just like the yes. films, because yes. you go all over the world to find these this footage, the original footage, because it's not digital like mm. what we do nowadays. That's such a difficult concept to understand. Right. What is that like? Uh, it's frustrating and very exciting. It is very much like a detective story. and. Like the film we're about to restore is mm -hmm. called Los Talos Amargos. It's an Argentinian film from 1955. And I work with a man in Buenos Aires, my friend uh, Fernando Martin Peña, who is a great cinephile. And he's the guy who found the original uncut Metropolis, Fritz Lang's Metropolis, uh, that created kind of a sensation a few years ago. And uh, we happened to meet in Buenos Aires and uh, took an immediate liking to each other. And now Fernando works on the advisory council for the Film Noir Foundation. And he has introduced me to a number of fantastic Argentinian films from the 1950s, uh, which I am dedicated to restoring. And we don't always have a negative or materials that we can readily used to do this. Mm -hmm. So it's funny, just uh, months ago, Fernando uh, wrote to me and said, I found it, you know, I found uh, a negative for Los Talos Amargos, and he found it out like hundreds of miles from Buenos Aires in some private residence, you know, with a bunch of other films and old rusted film wow. cans. So, you know, this can happen. You know, in this day and age, people mistakenly believe that everything has been accounted for. Yeah. You know, yeah. everything's been digitized, everything's been accounted for, and it's like, no, you're still going to find a great film you know, in a rusted film can mm. somewhere where you would never expect it to be. That still happens. I'm sure it makes the job 
frustrating but also exciting, like very exciting when you find something, right? Yes. What's a timeline for one of these projects from the moment that you start your research to finding every little piece of the puzzle it, it to the can, final film of It can vary widely. Uh, you know, sometimes if you find a, a negative that's in really good condition, it can happen very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, if you find only part of the film, like we restored a film called Too Late for Tears. It took us five years. From, from the decision to actually do it and finding the initial material, like, yeah, there's a print that we actually found, to then it was the print was incomplete, we need to find more. Mm -hmm. And then you reach a point where y you have to decide whether to go forward with what you have. But then there's the fear that if you start and you budget it at a certain amount of money, let's say you budget it at $85,000 to restore mm -hmm. the film or something, what happens if six months later you find a better negative of the film? You know, and you could have restored it for twenty-five thousand dollars or so. You know, yeah. so so there are a lot of decisions that you have to make. Uh, we haven't had that situation occur yet, but um, it's a challenge. You know, you have to find find a lot. And you know, I work with the UCLA Film and Television Archive a lot, so I re I rely on their judgment because, in a technical sense, I don't know much at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a technician. Uh, I'm a guy who has a lot of passion and enthusiasm for this, and I can talk people out of their money on occasion. <laughs> like we have to, we may have to save this. You know, it says you're very passionate. That you're able to do that. Well, it's your passion speaking. Yes, yes, it is. And, and it's amazing how many people around the world share that passion. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we get people who donate to, the, to our foundation every single day. <laughs> every single day, somebody in the world gives us money yeah. and says, I love this stuff. Keep, keep going. You know, mm -hmm. keep up the good work and everything. And it's like, wow. You know, and, and you know, we have people who've given hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars and we've had people who give ten dollars mm -hmm. and you know that that person who gives the ten is the one who can't afford it because that's all they can give is ten bucks right mm -hmm. and it and that means as much to me as the person who gives a hundred thousand dollars they cannot they can obviously afford it you know <laughs> but but I'm, they're both I'm, as passionate maybe yeah no absolutely mm -hmm. but I'm always amazed by the people who give twenty dollars twenty five dollars because they they are seriously thinking you know what this is important and they they don't get anything back immediately they just know that they're participating in in this crusade yeah. to to save these movies and it's 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 really amazing I, I love all these people that that help us out along the way that's it seems like you you really enjoy that and you have a passion for this and, and it's something bigger than you oh absolutely Oh, absolutely, it's bigger than me. I realize that I'm like the, the spear tip, yeah. you know. Uh, but it, I, years ago, I would have just stopped if, if it wasn't for the people who joined up, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, we're about to go out and show our new restoration, and it's going to be a packed theater, you know, filled with people who have never seen this movie before, have no idea what they're about to watch, and I know that they're going to love it. Well, thank you so much for talking about film noir and your passion and how you got into all of this, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. Subscribe to my channel if you want to watch more inspiring videos, learn about mental health, or join me on the quest to live a more meaningful life. If you like what you see, please like, comment, and share.